Welcome back to Drones in America by Market Scale. I'm your host, Grant Giat, and I am a partner in the Unmanned Aircraft Systems team leader at the law firm of Adams and Reese. Today, I am joined by Zinx Ian and Ace. Ian, welcome to the program. Hey, Grant. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Ian, you've been on the program before, and of course, you are probably the first company I heard of who is um, operating drone deliveries under Part 107. Are you guys still operating under Part 107? Yeah, we're still looking for all the possible use cases we can under Part 107. Great. So uh, why don't we, at the risk of repeating, uh, you know, from last time, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and Zing, how Zing got started and what you guys are up to today? Yeah, so my first experience with drones was actually a bit unfortunate. I was, I bought a uh, Falcon F-100 from Amazon. It's kind of a little toy drone and it didn't have any kind of FPV or anything. So I was just flying it around, kind of uh, watching it fly. It would get blown around with the wind and everything. And I decided to strap a smartphone on it and try and FaceTime that smartphone so I could get a little FPV experience. And as I was flying the drone, I flew it up real high, maybe 300 feet. And then I let go of the throttle and then it just started falling out of the sky like a rock with my smartphone strapped to the bottom. So that was a very scary experience. And no matter how much I throttled up, it just kept coming down and then smashed into the ground and my whole phone screen shattered and everything. So my first experience with drones was not that great, but later down the line, um, I was actually, as an undergrad in college, working on a lot of different mobile applications for startups. And it was all like cutting edge technology. I was doing stuff with augmented reality. I started doing a little bit of stuff for a real estate company and he was using DJI drones. And he actually gave me a DJI Mavic Pro as a gift. And I went out and I started flying this thing and I was like, wow, is this actually possible what this thing can do? As, this, as I was flying it around, I would let go of the throttles and it would stick perfectly in the air. And I didn't even have to look at it anymore and it would just stay there. And then I, would, I was looking at the limitations and I saw this thing could fly up to three miles. But of course with the FAA regulations, still can't fly it outside of line of sight. But I was just looking at the possibilities and one day I was flying it up high and had kind of a bird's eye view of everything underneath me and down below there was a taco bell on one side of the frame and then there was a neighborhood on the other side of the frame and i thought what if i could pick up something from that taco bell deliver it to that somebody in that neighborhood and fly back home and swap out the battery so that's where the idea of zing began that's fantastic now tell me i know you were operating in south florida i believe it was um, tell me about, wasn't there a body of water that you were able to fly over to make deliveries for a food company? Yeah, so once we got started and we were really rolling and we had uh, some little products that we, we were using, we got custom landing pads and everything like that. Well, I was always searching for the perfect place to do drone deliveries that were within visual line of sight. So I found a, a restaurant that was in St. Petersburg, Florida, that was actually right next to a river. And this river created a huge logistical challenge for that business, simply because the only way to get on the other side of that river was to take a 15 minute detour. And that detour had a drawbridge that was used frequently as well as a toll. So they had to pay what, two or $3 and then two or $3 on the way back to even make a delivery to that community. And this was a 500 home community on the other side of that river. So I decided to, try and make a delivery from there. We uh, got everything set up with a DJI Phantom and uh, we decided to like attach one, one of their little meals to the uh, Phantom and uh, using one of our drone delivery kits, we went over the river. It took only about two minutes, dropped off the package with our Zing hook that automatically released it. And then we just flew the drone back and that was our first successful part 107 delivery. And you perform this under part 107, right? Yeah, and that's, that's the cool thing about it is it was, it's all within the part 107 regulatory framework. Right. Zing's done a great job of proving that you can turn a profit under part 107. Um, we, we've seen other companies uh, also start to 
deliver more under Part 107 and really kind of uh, take full advantage of the FAA's guidance that it issued as a result of COVID, where it said, we want to fully enable drone operations in light of COVID-19. This is one way I would imagine being able to give food to people who want to social distance and don't leave their homes. I would imagine that, that, that that's one way you could fulfill that mandate. Yeah, exactly. And, and when we saw that mandate, uh, we were really excited. And uh, we actually started a, a whole drone delivery program where we would, we would send out our drone delivery kits for free to people all across the United States. I think we sent out 20 drone delivery kits and we told people how to use our drone delivery platform. And basically they would sign up, they would um, sign into our delivery app and we started them off by doing like a delivery straight back to their own house. Cause when COVID started, there was a big um, fad, I guess about contactless delivery and everyone wanted contactless delivery so we said even if we're just down the street from this person's house and we can deliver it like the last leg via drone we're making it a contactless delivery where no air particles are being exchanged between any people so that's where we really started with that whole platform idea but we were getting a lot of like comments on social media telling us how Drone delivery shouldn't be done under Part 107, even if it's possible, things like that. And we just kind of wanted to prove them wrong. So I guess we wanted to test the real limitations of what was possible. So my co-founder and I, we uh, went out to Miami and we decided to uh, make a delivery out there to the top of a skyscraper that was in Class B airspace all within the regulatory framework of part 107, just to show people that, hey, these little DJI drones, they're capable of a whole lot. And uh, so we, we took the uh, DJI drone, we had a DJI Mavic as the uh, delivery drone, and then we had a DJI Phantom as the filming drone. And uh, we got all the necessary approvals. We got a airspace authorization to go up to 750 feet in Miami Class B airspace and we got the Lance authorizations to go up to 400. And so we went up all the way up to 750 feet uh, to the top of this building that actually had a, a swimming pool on top that converts into a sky port for air taxis to land on. And as far as we know, we're the first unmanned vehicle to actually land on that sky port. And so we just went up there uh, with the Mavic Pro, dropped it off and uh, flew straight back. And this was during COVID, so there's like no cars on the road. It was all made possible because of COVID. And Ian, let me just say, um, as you know, I work with a high profile company in the industry that's been really ramping up Part 107 deliveries. This myth that the FAA is discouraging of Part 107 deliveries is a fallacy. It's just simply not true. I have had direct communications um, several times with the FAA, and as long as you're regulatorily compliant, uh, they support anything you can do under Part 107. If you're not going to be on line of sight and you're not crossing state lines, the FAA supports uh, drone delivery, whether it be under Part 107 or Part 135, as long as you follow the law. We too, um, and of course the company, I can say it, everyone knows, drone up. Um, you know, th th there are going to be people who are either mad they didn't think of it first, or that just don't understand the full scope of the rule. They haven't read the advisory circular. They just don't understand the full concept of what the FAA was envisioned um, when it established Part 107. So it's good to see that Zing, um, probably earlier than most companies, was taking advantage of that those regulatory capabilities. Yeah, and the way I found out about this Part 107 rule was not not through the internet. I mean, the, as you said, it was a big myth out there that drone delivery was not possible under Part 107. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when the FAA originally came out with the Part 107 rule, they stated that no drone delivery would be allowed. And then comments on that, on that rule before the final one came out changed the FAA's mind. So the, um, the, basically the FAA's idea within their comments on the final rule was that since a drone 
It can only fly within line of sight under normal Part 107 circumstances. And the only way you get categorized as an air carrier, say if you're like a commercial uh, 747 flying cargo with the UPS or FedEx, is if you have to cross those state lines. So they said, if you don't cross the state lines, technically you're not an air carrier and you're just flying within a mile. So we're going to allow it. Right. And um, I think the issue here is that there are a lot of people in the industry that give out guidance on this issue as though they're infallible and they know it and they haven't picked up the phone and talked to the FAA. They haven't picked up the phone and talked to a lawyer. They just are deciding within their own mind, you know, you can't deliver under 107 and that's just simply not true. We see Zing doing it. We see Drone Up doing it. There are other companies that do it, um, you know, and uh, I, you know, I can go ahead and disclose this, this point because you gave me permission. Uh, Zing recently hired me to be its counsel and I, I'm so excited and enthusiastic to be working with Zing. Um, Zing is my fourth client within the past four months that has retained me at least in part to pursue part 135 certification. And that's, that leads me to my next question, Ian. Um, and I'll get to that in a second. But before I do, um, this drone deliveries are more popular than ever. Largely, I think because of COVID-19, I've seen firsthand how people in vulnerable populations, the elderly, um, those with underlying conditions, how they react when they learn that they don't leave their house to receive medications, COVID test kits, food, things like that. They're able to socially distance while remaining at home. Um, and companies are starting to take advantage of this. And we really, we already have three carriers who've been certified. Of course, I'm talking about Wing, UPS, and Amazon. Um, there are more on the way. And we really are approaching a time where the skies are opening up for drone deliveries. It'll be a while before it's ubiquitous, of course, but we're leaps and bounds, I think, from where we were last year. Would you agree, Ian? I would agree completely. It's, it's so exciting to see the progress, uh, especially in this last year. I think that's the silver lining in all of this, is that drone delivery is becoming um, something that's on the forefront. Um, the public acceptance has skyrocketed just because they see these real world use cases of contactless delivery. Um, really it's a big part of it is the public acceptance as you say very often. And I completely agree. And uh, this, this whole um, scenario has brought that public acceptance to a level that a lot of people were saying we wouldn't see for like five or 10 years. Um, and I'm just really excited, as you said, about, all of the possibilities and especially now that part 135 is out and we see companies now getting part 135 certificates as you said it's it's just going to bring things to the next level uh something i'm really excited about is nasa's utm program or unmanned traffic management that is going to go hand in hand with part 135 enabling beyond visual line of sight flights and as you know, the remote ID finalized rules coming up this December. And that, hopefully. Ho hopefully, yeah. They, they've been saying it for a while, I guess. But, um, uh, but yeah, like as long as the remote ID rule does come out this December, I think that UTM itself is going to start seeing a lot of progress, um, especially since remote ID is that key to knowing where all the other drones are operating in the airspace. As soon as we have that information, uh, drone delivery companies will be able to deconflict with one another, and that's going to be key. That's a great point. Um, UTM is such a critical point to this whole process. Um, I, I've been, I've worked with a couple of UTM providers, and UTM is something that I often feel like needs to be demystified because it's kind of hard to put into words. But when you think of a future where you have manned and unmanned aircraft in the sky at once, as well as vehicles on the ground, and you have highways in the sky, everyone's able to communicate. That to me is what UTM means. It, it means that um, you're able to put everything on one grid and really ensure safety to such an extent that we can have a Jetsons-like infrastructure system. Maybe a ways off for, like I said before, it's ubiquitous, but we're getting there. But, um, you know, drone deliveries are, 
becoming so popular. Um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that six months ago, I did not have one drone delivery client. I now have four. And, and I think it's largely because the FAA has opened up part 135. In addition to approving 107 operations for delivery and supporting those operations, it also is opening up part 135. Um, why did Zing, why is Zing choosing to pursue a part 135 certificate? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, the part 135 certificate is the key to beyond visual line of sight drone delivery. Now, the reason a lot of people think that drone delivery is not possible under part 107 is because when you're taking the part 107 test, there's usually a question in there about drone delivery. And it's usually something along the lines of, are you allowed to get a waiver for flying beyond visual line of sight if you're doing a drone delivery? Which the answer is no, there's no case where, unless it's a very special like COVID related case I've seen in some instances, you really are not yeah, able I to mean, get I think, it. Yeah, I mean, I think it flat out says in the statute you can. Yeah, it's, it's in there, it's, it just says, under the waiver section, like you can, in order to fly beyond visual, you basically, uh, just basically you can't get anything for drone delivery. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the reason that part 135 is essential for drone delivery is just that beyond visual line of sight aspect. If you want to plug into UTM, you got to have it. Absolutely. And I can tell you from starting the process, you know, with three other clients and soon to be starting the process with Zing, um, it is kind of like the Wild West, but in a good way. The FAA has really thought long and hard about this. You know, Jay Merkel's been saying for a couple of years now that they really envision Part 135 as the, the structure that's going to govern drone deliveries, you know, at least for the foreseeable future. And we're really starting to see um, that play out in, in several ways. And, you know, now there's um, recently the FAA came out with its policy on type certification, um, which of course, you know, is, ne is a necessary component in order to obtain a part 135 unless you get some kind of special exemption, which is a little beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. But um, the point is there's a lot involved, but it is exciting. And we have three companies that have already done it. And of course that's Google's uh, wing. UPS and uh, Amazon. And so it's exciting to see where those companies are going to take this. It's exciting to see what Zing is going to do with it, as well as the other companies that are applying. But I want to move on and talk about something that I am super excited about for Zing. And another reason why I'm super excited to be working with you guys. And that, of course, is your selection to a very um, exclusive, I guess I would say, uh, I don't say club, that's not the right word, um, group of drone operators that have been welcomed into the extension of the integration pilot program. And of course, I'm referring to beyond. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? And first of all, let me say congratulations, but tell us about that whole process. Well, thank you so much. And yeah, we're really excited to be a part of the beyond program. Um, so yeah, as many of you know, the integration pilot program was a program that started in October of 2017. And there were over 150 uh, state, local, and tribal governments who applied, but only 10 were accepted. And these 10 were partnering with uh, drone delivery companies, they're partnering with uh, agriculture companies, just trying to push the bounds of what was possible with drones. And uh, these testing sites were enabled to do that, like get expedited waivers and things like that. And so it was, since we started after the program started, uh, it was kind of difficult for us to get involved initially. Uh, we were talking to some of the, the uh, governments who had these um, drone delivery proposals in place, but of course they already had drone delivery companies that they were working with. So it was very kind of like a tight knit group. Um, I, we're in Florida. And so we wanted to get involved with the Florida program, but Florida actually decided to withdraw from the program with their mosquito um, operation. Uh, so then we tried a few different others, North Carolina, San Diego, um, Choctaw Nation, a few others, but it was really hard to get in. And so we, we eventually um, were connected with Kansas and the director of aviation there, his name is Bob Brock. We're really grateful that he has given us a chance to be a part of this program now. 
And now that Beyond has began, they've decided to start partnering with some more companies. So when this was announced, he reached out to us and let us know that we were going to be part of this awesome new program. And uh, the really exciting thing about Beyond is it's not, it's no longer focusing on like expanding waivers or anything like that. It's focused on quantifying how much of an economic impact is this drone delivery, agriculture operations, how much is uh, going to affect the economy? And also, how are we going to start scaling this nationwide across the whole national airspace system, as well as, um, yeah, just scaling this up to a point where it's actually affecting the economy. So that's really exciting. And BEYOND is actually an acronym, and the acronym stands for uh, BV loss, expanding your operations needing drones. So I thought that was a really cool acronym and just being able to test BV loss is going to really bring us to the next level. So, um, and I, I absolutely, one of the things I am most excited about in 2021 is going up to Kansas with you and seeing this um, play out, how, how wonderful to be a part of this program. Tell the audience about some of the operations that Zing is going to be performing as part of this program. So we have some proposed operations that we've been thinking about doing. Uh, one would be in, in a sort of a smaller city there outside of controlled airspace. Um, and it would be like performing sort of uh, short deliveries using a variety of different drones. We're hoping to use a variety, some sort of DJI drone with some of our kits attached to it. Um, really it's going to be testing the next phase of what's possible with Beyond Visual Line of Sight. And we're hoping that we can utilize DJI along that process, but we may be able to develop a custom drone if, if necessary. Um, and we're excited to be part of Kansas because Kansas is often known as the capital of um, aviation, I believe. And uh, really it's just being part of that program is going to really, um, enhance our ability to, as you alluded to earlier, like a type certification, just get us right in that process. And with the real decision makers who are able to kind of put that process through, push the paperwork through and kind of speed everything up. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited about it. And when I think of Kansas, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a lot of open space. So it's, I mean, you may very well be operating, uh, we may very well be operating in a metropolitan area, but um, when I think of perfect places to test a program like this, it's a state like Kansas. Um, you know, uh, Nevada is the same way, and that's why we, we've seen some great stuff go, go down there. Um, any place where you just have wide open stretches of land, um, I, I think makes for a good, uh, a good location because the risks are minimal. Um, that being said, I don't know if we're going to be operating near metropolitan areas or not, but it's certainly going to be an exciting uh, venture for sure. Yeah, it's going to be real exciting. And yeah, that's the great thing about Kansas is it's a, it's a nice rural type community. And uh, yeah, you can perform potentially when we come to that point, like with a VTOL or something, being able to do those long shot deliveries out to rural homes and things like that. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's just really exciting to see uh, that. And as well, Kansas is also the, it was the very first state to have a statewide UTM. So I thought that was really interesting and really exciting that we get to be a part of that state. It is, it's, you know, I, I know several people involved in this programs, um, both the state and local levels in the FAA and all the stakeholders involved, they've done a great job with it. Um, one or two of them may not have worked out. Um, one of my biggest passions, and I've said this many, many times um, on this program, is obviously you can't start over an IPP or something from the Beyond program, but I want to get something going in Louisiana. I'm working with some um, some people in government to try and make that happen. We have a lot of cool end user industries down here. And so uh, I just feel like it's something I want my home state involved. And I think we're getting closer to that. It'll be great to see. But Ian, um, you know, we have a couple minutes left. I'll, I want you to be able to tell us a little bit about what else Zing has coming up. Yeah, and I love that you mentioned Louisiana because I mean, it's the perfect state for drone delivery. 
I mean, you've got the ports of New Orleans where you've got ships going through there where there's a potential for ship to shore deliveries. And you got a lot of river running through there for our B loss part 107 deliveries. Um, and our, and really what we're, we want to achieve in the near term future, um, we're working on a new product that we believe is going to be a game changer. It's uh, going to be compatible with DJI drones and it's going to really change everything when it comes to drone delivery. So be on the lookout for that. Um, we'll be targeting more businesses where we can potentially perform part 107 deliveries. We've been looking at things like ferry routes that go across rivers and thinking about how to expedite those, especially up north when those rivers get frozen over. Um, we're looking at things like um, training part 107 pilots, because as you know, part 107 exam, you don't have to actually fly a drone to complete the exam. So we wanna create a training program for pilots to be able to learn how to successfully perform deliveries in a, in a safe manner. Um, so those are the near-term things that are coming up for Zing and be on the lookout for our progress within the Beyond program. I think that's gonna be the most exciting and uh, looking forward to working with you on that. Great, no, I look forward to working with you guys. And as you know, there's a big river that runs through Louisiana. Yeah. I used to deliver things from one side to another. I mean, I live literally 30 seconds from the Mississippi River. Um, so many great opportunities for drone delivery companies down here. So uh, I'm excited to see that flourish. Um, Ian, thank you so much for coming back again. I'm thrilled to be working with Zing. Uh, you guys have made a name for yourself. You've done so many great things just since the last time you and I talked, February, March. Um, it, it's been great to track your progress and see what you're doing. And, you know, it, I'm really interested and excited to see what you guys do under part 135. You've already done so much under 107. Um, taking this next level is just, you know, absolutely phenomenal. So thank you again, Ian, for being on the program. Thanks, Grant. I really appreciate it. Um, it was a pleasure to be on. Please be sure to join us next week for the next episode of Drones in America by Market Scale.